Namaste, my dear young students. Today, there will be a very crispy session upon the adjustments in respect to the final accounts chapter. Usually, there will be lots of doubts over how to treat these adjustments in respect to the final accounts. So we will learn some of the important adjustments that usually is being asked in the question paper and uh, uh, the chapter on final accounts. At the outset, what are adjustments? Adjustments are all those transactions which have not been included in the books of the accounts. Primarily, you would have studied, uh, say during the accounting process that the transactions would be recorded first into the journal, which is the first book of entry. Then we will post these journal entries into the ledger book and this ledger being the final book of entry. And from the ledger that we would draw the trial balance, which is again a statement which depicts the arithmetical accuracy of these accounts that we have prepared on the ledger. And from wherein we draw the trading profit and loss account and balance sheet, which forms the final account of a business enterprise. Now here, according to your syllabi, that we are bound to learn on the final accounts of a sole proprietor. At times it so happens that there would not be enough time or that a certain transactions would not have been included into the books of the accounts. In such a case, it would be given at the end of the question and would be titled as adjustments. So here we go learning the most important adjustments, their meaning, as well as the treatment upon the final accounts. So the first one, the inclusive, uh, of most of the questions would be in respect to closing stock. What does this closing stock mean? Closing stock actually means the goods that have not been sold during the end of the year. The unsold stock of the goods would be referred to as closing stock. So here, when you talk on this closing stock, uh, usually this closing stock being given as in the form of adjustment, any adjustment would be taken twice into the books of the accounts. Once for the sake of, say, including them into the books of the accounts. And again, also we show them as a part of the balance sheet entry. So here, this closing stock would be taken on the credit side of the trading account. So when you are preparing the trading account, you would take it as buy closing stock. So this will be shown on the credit side of the trading account. And also this closing stock would be shown as a current asset in the balance sheet. So it would come on the asset side as in the list of the current assets in the balance sheet. Now, next we go with the depreciation and appreciation of an asset. First, we will learn appreciation. Usually, the increase in the value of the asset would be regarded as appreciation. Since it marks an income again to the business, so it would be taken on to the profit and loss account on the credit side. And in the balance sheet, that you would be taking into the balance sheet and on the asset side, whichever asset has been appreciated, it would be added to the concerned asset. Suppose you are dealing in respect to land, so the appreciation to the land will be added to the land asset value. So it will be added to the concerned asset on the asset side of the balance sheet. So on the PNL account, we would show the appreciation part, only the appreciation part, the calculated appreciation part is shown on the credit side of the profit and loss account. And the balance sheet, this portion of the appreciation will be added back to the concerned asset. Next is in respect to depreciation. Depreciation marks the gradual decrease in the value of an asset. And since we lose a part of our asset, this will be shown on the debit side of the PNL account. The depreciation on any asset should be shown on the debit side of the PNL account. As you add back the appreciation, you must have uh, uh, gotten idea as to what this depreciation should be done. Here, it would be subtracted from the concerned asset. 
so you may have to reduce the portion of the depreciation from the concert asset subtracted from the respective asset hope i'm clear on these uh, adjustments next we move into the next set of adjustments so we will talk about the expenses and the income so here when you take the expenses usually outstanding expenses and prepaid expenses would be under our discussion outstanding expenses refer to all such expenses which belongs to the current year the year in which we are doing the final accounts but they have not yet been paid the expenses have not been met it has not been paid so here what we do is since they belong to the concerned year itself in the pnl account usually where do you show the expenses except for the wages which is a direct expense which will be debited to the trading account all the rest of the expenses would be debited to profit and loss account so here you add this outstanding expenses to the concerned expense whichever expense you are dealing about you have to add this expense outstanding amount to the respective expense money which together will be shown on the debit side of the profit and loss account coming to the balance sheet it will be shown as a clear liability a separate item it would be marked on the liability side of the balance sheet next is prepaid expenses so prepaid expenses means the expenses which we have paid in advance for the forthcoming year or for any of the future years ahead so here the prepaid expenses since they do not belong to this particular year it will be subtracted from the concerned expense you have to minus this money this amount from the concerned expense and when it comes to the balance sheet it has to be shown on the asset side because we still have the money with the outside party it will be shown on the asset side of the balance sheet now let us go with the incomes part so when you take up this incomes over here so here incomes either it is paid in advance or it could be earned but not received so let us consider first the income received in advance you have not worked for the third party but they have paid you in advance your money so here your work still is demanded from them and naturally that that does not belong to this particular year so income received in advance usually where do you show all the incomes it would be shown on the credit side of pnl account so when you are showing it on the credit side i would say that you have to subtract this portion of the income received in advance from the respective income whichever income you are dealing for instance rent received in advance you minus this rent received in advance from the total rent received given as in the form of income and in the balance sheet show this portion of the advance money received as a liability you owe your work to the outsiders so it should be shown as a liability in the balance sheet next is accrued income when you say accrued the word accrued indicates income earned but not received you have worked for them it is just the opposite of the earlier discussion so you have worked for the third party but they have not yet paid you the money so here what happens it belongs to this year though you have not received it in cash it belongs to this year so incomes as usual will come on the credit side but then it should be added it should be added to the respective income and in the balance sheet this money will be shown as an asset because you still are to get this money so therefore it will be shown as an asset next students a very very important adjustment is in respect to bad debts and pdd now bad debts represent the money not collected from the debtors so when debtors fail to pay the money by the given date then we call them as bad debts now there is a possibility that this bad debts would be given in the trial balance and also in the list of the adjustments when it happens to be given in the trial balance you should understand that this has already been taken into the books of the accounts which means that whatever bad debts portion whatever bad debts money is being given in the trial balance it would be debited to the pnl account 
it has to be taken on to the debit side of the P&L account and you will not reconsider it in the balance sheet. This should not be taken again into the balance sheet. When the same bad debts is given in the adjustments, usually the word further is being indicated here, which says that already we have taken the trial balance, uh, bad debts being given over there. So further bad debts incurred, that means that uh, the date might be a little, uh, you know, uh, towards the end, maybe 30th or 31st December, they have not assessed the bad debts. Later, they give you in the form of adjustments. So this would figure out at two places. One is as usual, it would be taken to the PNL account on the debit side. You can add both, suppose if it is given both in the trial balance and adjustments, you can add and together you can put it as bad debts on the debit side of the PNL account. Or you can take it as two different items. But this portion of the bad debts which is mentioned in the adjustments should also be taken into the asset side of the balance sheet. So where do you, how do you show it on the asset side of the balance sheet would be, you have to subtract it from the data's value. So data's would be given to you on the trial balance. And from the data's, you have to subtract this bad debts and you have to show it on the asset side of the balance sheet. Hope I'm clear on this discussion. And next comes the provision for doubtful debts. This is being called as PDD, PBD. Sometimes, you know, this is also being used as in the form of reserve. They say reserve for bad and doubtful debts. All these mean the same. What is the meaning of this word PDD actually means? See, the businessman, he would reserve a certain portion of his profit towards the contingency of meeting the bad debts in future. A conservative approach, we say, that tomorrow I would know that this person is not going to pay me my money back. So I would be prepared. I would keep my a certain profits aside so that in case if losses happen on account of bad debts, I'm ready that I would meet this. Okay. So this is represented by provision for doubtful debts. Now, this provision usually will be given in the trial balance as well as in the adjustments, just like just like how I have uh, taught you in respect to the bad debts. Similarly here, PDD, there is a possibility that it would be found both in the trial balance as well as in the adjustments. Trial balance, as the discussion goes, similar to that of the bad debts, that these are the provision which has already been taken into the books of the accounts, meaning this belongs to the last year. The provision that you have created for the last year. And this is for the current year. That is, you are going to create it for this particular year freshly. This would represent the current year. Now, there are two ways in which this could be dealt. And uh, before the treatment part, also understand that PDD would be given in the form of a percentage on data. So usually in the adjustments part, when they give you on the trial balance, the money would be mentioned. But when it is being given on the adjustment part, it would be said as 10% or 5% that it needs to be created on the data's value. Now, when you are doing this, students remember, do not take it on the gross data's. What is being given in the trial balance, directly don't compute this percentage on the gross data's. What is required is the bad debts that is given in the adjustments, which have already not been taken into the books of the accounts I have referred to. You have to subtract from the data's value and this we call it as net data's value. On this value only, you have to compute this PDD. Let me say you quickly again, PDD cannot be computed directly on the total data's value being given on the trial balance. The bad debts which are given in the adjustments should be subtracted from the data's value. And on the net data's value, you may have to compute this PDD. But then if bad debts are given in the trial balance, you need not have to subtract it. Why? Because they have already been taken into account. So only I refer to the bad debts being given in the adjustments should be subtracted. And then only this PDD has to be computed. Now, let us see how this treatment on this PDD could be done. See here, I said you two ways are there. So let us go with the simple way. That is, uh, you will have this profit and loss account being taken. So here it refers to on the debit side. Let us uh, 
take this as the debit side. So what all would have been taken on to the debit side? You have taken the bad debts. Am I correct? The bad debts that are there both in the trial balance as well as in the adjustments, both are to be taken on to the debit side. Now here, by PDD, which represents the PDD that is given in the trial balance, the PDD that is mentioned in the trial balance and which would be given on the credit side of the trial balance would be put on the credit side. And whatever PDD that you have computed using the adjustments part, that is debtors minus bad debts given in the adjustments into 5% or 10%, that money can be taken on to the debit side. So this is one easy way that uh, for remembrance, it would be pretty easy on your part because on the trial balance, PDD is given on the credit side. You are also taking it to the credit side and PDD being given in the adjustments, you are debiting it, which represents the PDD that is being marked on to the, uh, you know, this year's current year's amount. Now, there is another way also where you represent on the PNL account. So here we talk about this PNL account. Now, when you go to the debit side, okay, this will mark the debit side of the PNL account. Here, what you are supposed to do is two bad debts as usual. This is both trial balance money plus adjustments money. Together, you will be taking. To this, what you have to do is PDD given in the adjustments should be added first. That is which marks the new PDD for the current year. You are going to add this PDD and you have to subtract the PDD which belongs to last year. Last year PDD I told you is given under the trial balance. This will be subtracted. Now, sometimes, sometimes, okay. So there could be a negative number. If this comes in a negative, the whole thing has to be shifted on to the credit side. The reason being here, it is so simple. I'm saying you that, see, in case if the present PDD is higher up, it would denote a positive number, which will remain on the debit side. At times, you would have reduced the current year's PDD and the last year's PDD is still persisting. In such a case, the entire figure would go to the credit side. So you can have both the ways of working upon it and this being simpler as far first few students are concerned. Class 11, it would be like early beginners you are. So I would suggest you to go with this particular method where you would just put across. But this is the right way of taking it, the second one. The reason being the understandability here. Are you going to charge the PDD to your profits? Are you still have the money as a reserve with you? If you still have the money as a reserve with you, that would be shown on the credit side. And if you are charging freshly your PDD, then it would go on to the debit side. That is the basic understanding of the entire learn. All right. Next, we move into the discount on datas and discount on credit tasks. So what do you mean by discount on datas? So when the datas are promptly paying you, you would rather provide a certain discount to them. So this would be called as discount on data. Now this also usually is given in the adjustments and it would be in the form of a percentage. Generally, a percentage is being mentioned. Now here care must be taken that this percentage should not be directly worked out again on data. Whatever the numbers relating to the data, meaning let it be bad days or let it be PDD, but only given under adjustments. Do not consider the trial balance numbers because already several times I've told you whatever is given in the trial balance marks already being taken into the books of the accounts. So you have to deduct the bad debts and PDD given into the adjustments that will result in net data. On this data only, the discount percentage has to be computed. So be careful on this uh, computation part and you have to deduct bad debts and PDD being given in the adjustments. And the treatment is quite simple, students. So on the PNL account, since it is discount allowed, you understand that you are giving the discount which marks as a loss to the business. So PNL account, it would be taken on to the debit side. 
And when it comes to the balance sheet, it has to be subtracted from the debtors on the asset side of the balance sheet. So you may have to subtract the discount on debtors being given. Already I have told you that you may have to subtract the bad debts and PDD being given in the adjustments, only given in the adjustments. So if there happens to be a discount on debtors, that also will be subtracted from your debtors on the asset side of the balance sheet. Next, we move on to discount on creditors. Creditors are the set of people to whom we owe money. We have to give them money. So when discount on creditors is being provided, it shows that you are receiving the discount. So naturally, it will mark an income to us. So all incomes would be credited to PNL account. You have to take this portion of the discount on creditors being allowed to us on the credit side of the PNL account. When it comes to the balance sheet, on the liabilities, you already know that the total creditors will be shown. So here from the creditors, you will be subtracting this discount being given. This shows that you need not have to pay this discount money to the creditors. So you have to subtract this discount and the net figure will be shown on the liability side of the balance sheet. Hope these adjustments are being clear to you. Next. Another set of adjustments that we discuss would be interest on capital and interest on drawings. See here, generally, it is the tendency of the sole proprietorship to reduce the tax liability. So in which case, what happens is, though it is his own money being invested over here, there is a provision um, legally that whenever the interest is being charged on the capital part, that that would reduce the tax liability over here. So it is allowed as per the legal uh, you know, uh, rules that interest on capital would be allowed to the sole proprietor. That is the reason why this interest is being charged on the capital and will be a charge shown on the profits of the business. So here, since it marks from the business point of view, if you take, it marks the loss to the business. So on the PNL account, you may have to take it on to the debit side. So when it comes to the balance sheet, on the liability side of the balance sheet, you have to add this interest on capital to the capital. Anyway, capital is taken as the first liability over here and capital plus interest on capital. This is how you show it on the balance sheet. Next interest on drawings so drawings you know very well that it is the money that the businessman uses for his personal purpose which belongs to the business the money which belongs to the business is using it for his personal purpose now interest will be charged by the business because the proprietor should not overdraw the money so that is the reason why the interest would be charged and since it is marked as an income to the business it will be shown on the credit side of the pnl account and on the liability side, both drawings as well as interest on drawings together will be subtracted from the capital. So what we do is capital to this, we will be adding interest on capital and then net profit also should be added. Additional capital also should be added. And after that, you would be subtracting both drawings as well as interest on drawings. So both these will be subtracted from the capital so that the adjusted capital would form a part of the current liability. So this is all about the most important adjustments that are under discussion. There are a few more also and we will discuss them in our next class. And as of now, you can plan learning these adjustments properly and practice once again, take several examples. Your question bank has a lot of questions upon this. So you can consider these questions and check it out as to uh, what are the treatment that is being given to all these adjustments and uh, say try to practice more and more number of adjustments and understand the concept also behind as to how they act upon. See, every adjustment appears twice, I told you. The reason being, once we would... Uh, put them into the trading or PNL account for the reason that they are not included in the books of the accounts earlier and now you are going to include them into the books of the accounts and again it is also being taken into the balance sheet as we are going to add them up into the final account so this is the way how these adjustments are to be treated so hope this lecture would be more purposeful to you Listen to it once again and practice well with several examples. Thank you, students, and have a good time ahead.